Let's say you were thinking of changing a smartphone. How would you decide? Most likely, you would mentally create a list of pros and cons of upgrading and if the pros outweighed the cons, you would go ahead with the purchase. Or, if you had to decide which college to join after finishing school, most likely, you will make a list of few colleges where you are eligible for admission, think of the pros and cons of each college and decide. This pros and cons approach is probably how we make most decisions. But, it has many problems. All the thumb rules, heuristics, cognitive biases, and inherent assumptions and prejudices that we have discussed earlier adversely impact the pros and cons approach. Take changing your smartphone decision. If your friend has recently told you about a brand, availability bias, which explains how we rely more on readily available or recent information, will add a pro in favor of that brand. Then, confirmation bias will set in, which will make you look only at data that supports your pre-existing belief about that brand being better. If you have done fair amount of research on two brands of smartphones and then a friend says that his experience with a third brand has been great, some cost effect will come into play. You will feel that you have to do more research on another brand and your earlier research will all go waste. We also looked at satisficing, how our decisions are bounded by the information we have and how we want to stay confined to the familiar. This too will impact the pros and cons list you will make. If you've done a lot of research and there are too many pros and cons, then it is possible that analysis paralysis sets in, making you indecisive and you will stick with the phone you have. Adolescents at times make decisions where there is only one choice, like should they break up with a friend or not. Then emotions play a big role in their decisions. First thing they have to learn is to widen their choices. Instead of framing the choice as break up or not, they should come up with options like having a cooling off period of a few months with that friend. And the question of which college to choose perhaps needs a different perspective altogether. And a question frame like, what is it that I want to do with my life and what is the best way of achieving that is a better way of framing this decision. Far better than making a list of pros and cons is following a process to arrive at better decisions. We will look at one such process in the next video.